This is a bookball summary of the book Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. The impact of random events on our lives is underestimated by most of us due to our tendency to be fooled by randomness. Skills and determinism are used instead of luck and randomness. Almost nowhere is this discrepancy more apparent than in the stock market, where capable investor should usually be replaced with lucky idiot. Skills are essential for some professions. Plumbing and dentistry would not be able to sustain long careers without them. Due to the inherent randomness of stock markets, it's possible that unskilled investors can produce impressive track records. This is just as millions of monkeys typing for long enough can eventually produce Shakespeare. Some are very likely to do so. Consider for example a cohort of 10,000 investors who, for the sake of argument, are relatively incompetent. Each year, they only have a 45% chance of becoming profitable. As a result, you would be better off investing based on the outcome of a coin flip. It is almost 200% likely that they will be profitable after 5 years, despite the lack of skills they possess. With flawless track records and exceptional skills, they would be praised for their accomplishments. Eventually, randomness will be turned against these acutely successful random fools. A devastating quarter of Wall Street trading can cause traders to lose everything in one huge blow up after years of success. Often, their short-lived success was due to the fact that they simply happened to be in the right place at the right time, i.e. pure luck. We often mistake luck and randomness for skill and determinism. No theory can ever be proved right, only wrong. The basis of all empirical science is a process called induction. However, the problem of induction means that no theory can ever be proven right, only wrong. Thus, from seeing hundreds of white swans, we might infer, mistakenly, that all swans are white. Unfortunately, this approach carries an inherent problem, illustrated by the famous example of black swans as stated by philosopher John Stuart Mill. No number of observations of white swans can allow the interference that all swans are white, but the observation of a single black swan is sufficient to refute that conclusion. A similar mindset can be prudent in investing, and assuming the past is a relevant sample of what the future holds can lead to an unpleasant surprise. If things had changed, could you still infer anything about swans? Yet wherever people are involved, there will be constant change through adaptation. Life is unfair and non-linear. The best does not always win. The common keyboard was designed to avoid jamming old-fashioned typewriters, but because people are too lazy to switch to a different kind of keyboard, it has prevailed. Even inadequate products may come to dominate the market if they pass the so-called tipping point. Consider for example Microsoft. When enough people started using Microsoft products, it created a positive feedback loop, where new customers bought Microsoft products precisely because everyone they knew was already using them. After a product has passed the tipping point, it is in a very strong position. Non-linear events like the tipping point are hard for us to predict. In real life, an incremental change can have a huge impact so people give up before the rewards. Most of our reasoning is based on simple heuristics and is context dependent. Our reasoning is context dependent and mostly based on simple heuristics, and we are ill-equipped to handle the probabilistic reasoning required by today's high information environment. Unfortunately, these lazy shortcuts cause our reasoning to become irrational and marred by what psychologists call biases. For example, Due to attribution bias, we tend to disproportionately ascribe successes to our own abilities and failures to bad luck. Our thinking also becomes path-dependent, meaning that the route with which we arrive at a given situation dictates how we think about it. For instance, if you were to win $5 million today and lose $4 million tomorrow, you would likely be much less happy than if you simply won $1 million tomorrow, although the end result is identical. Path dependency means we cling to our existing options, even in the face of contradictory information. This inclination can be counterproductive. Emotions can help us make decisions, but overwhelm our capacity for rational reasoning. Without emotions to give us that little irrational nudge, we would agonize endlessly over the slightest decisions. Consider the example known as Buridan's donkey. A donkey that is equally hungry and thirsty stands equidistant between food and water. If it were purely rationally optimizing what to do, in theory, it would die of both hunger and thirst, unable to decide which to pursue first. A little randomness helps it to make up its mind, 
just like you might use the flip of a coin to help resolve an impasse. Emotions are fundamentally irrational and are designed to stop us from temporizing. Intelligent individuals need to recognize that their capability for rational reasoning can easily be overwhelmed by emotions. In fact, neurobiologists have found evidence to support the notion that we feel emotions first, then try to rationalize an explanation for them. This means emotions have a stronger influence on rational thinking than the other way round. When Ulysses sailed his ship past the deadly yet seductive sirens, he had his men pour wax in their ears so they would not hear their song. Similarly, in some cases, we can choose to avoid emotional input to protect our reasoning. For example, an investor who knows he is prone to act irrationally when incurring losses might choose simply not to look at the performance of his portfolio unless it triggers a certain predefined alarm. The past always reveals patterns, causes, and explanations in retrospect. In retrospect, we always find patterns, causes, and explanations for past events, but they are mostly useless for predicting the future. This is due to hindsight bias, where we tend to naturally find patterns and causal relationships where there may not be any. Some traders use backtesters to see how certain trading rules would have performed historically, but the past success of these rules is due to pure randomness. We are inherently poor at understanding the impact of rare events, which is why early climate researchers removed the largest temperature spikes from their data because they thought they were unlikely to occur. Even experienced investors fall into the trap of focusing on what is likely to happen, and many traders who enjoyed short-lived success used trading strategies where they won small sums often, but subsequently lost large amounts all at once. Although randomness in the stock market is often lethal for your portfolio, there are instances where randomness can be truly enjoyable. A scientist using elaborate prose as noise to disguise the fact that he has nothing of value to say is infuriating. Despite our best efforts, we are sometimes the victims of adversity caused by harmful randomness. Stoicism encourages us to follow a dignified path of personal elegance, never showing self-pity, never blaming others, and never complaining. In the media and the stock markets, random noise is not worth listening to. People who obsessively read the Wall Street Journal every day expend a lot of effort for very little reward, and stock market price movements are mostly random, unimportant noise. Today's information environment is so cluttered with useless news, the cost of wading through all of them by far exceeds the cost of missing those few truly valuable items. It's akin to searching for a needle in a haystack for some 30 hours each month. Similarly, stock market price movements are mostly random, unimportant noise, with only very little real change in the value of the stocks. Though Bloomberg journalists may try to interpret and explain every minuscule movement, stock prices actually fluctuate quite disconnectedly from the fundamentals they are supposed to reflect. In the long run, certain stocks can perform better than others, but in the short term, most movements are merely random noise. If an investor checks her portfolio every minute, she will largely only see the small variance inherent to her portfolio and will rejoice at profits and agonize over losses. If she checks her portfolio annually, she will feel pleasure for 19 out of 20 years. What's your most important key takeaway? Please comment down below and share the video if you like it. Check out these other two videos. Thank you and until next time.